Hello. Um. Is there a show last uh, two days ago? Yes, there. An episode of 40 minutes is only 37 minutes long. So I'm going to go ahead and abbreviate that because those people couldn't hear. So, um, I was basically talking about when all the Syrians come here. These people have been in a war-torn country for over 10 years now. And uh, my main gripe is when we bring a whole bunch of new people into our country, the people that are already here, already, they get sidestepped. And what I mean by sidestepped is America is, is having an economic turnaround right now. And say, for instance, a bunch of companies decide to settle in Texas or New Jersey, even California. Well, when a new company comes to America around the same time, they have these events going around the world, and we're talking about bringing a new group of people in here. What the first thing will happen is they will relocate these Syrians where the new jobs will be. And then that will piss off the people in the communities where the jobs would have went to those people, but they're still going to the Syrians. So this is what's going to really happen. Just like over in Germany and other countries where the Syrians have uh, popped up, these people have become uh, territorial. In other words, uh, they're bringing their belief system with them. So here in America, we have homosexuals walking the streets freely. We have uh, different ethnic races walking the streets freely. Now, if you're used to only seeing a group of people, a certain group of people, you're not used to seeing Americans or what you think you can do to an American or say to an American, just like when the um, Irish came here. The Irish were getting the shit handed to them by the English. And when they got here, they started handing the same shit the English was doing to them to the blacks and so-called Hispanics at the time. So what's going to happen when the Syrians get here from a war-torn country? They're all um, pretty much uh, tribe-related. In other words, they're going to stick to themselves. And when people come to America... A lot of Americans don't know that the United States government actually tells these people not to deal with certain Americans. Don't deal with blacks. Don't deal with Hispanics. A friend of mine who's no longer with us anymore who passed away. I did a video about Joe years ago. He told me before he got to America, they gave him like a speech like, don't deal with African Americans. They'll try to rob you or cheat you. And Hispanics will do the same. Only trust, you know, a group of people. Um, this is what our government tells other people before they even step foot on our dirt and our soil. And don't deal with these people, don't deal with these people, only deal with us. And that's not, you know, fair in an economic standpoint. So this is going to be my last video of the year till after I have my surgery. Well, I want you to know, you know, I've been waiting in line for two years on and off at different medical clinics and, um, you know, for general and you know now just recently I didn't go to the dental clinic they had because I didn't want to spend $500 to wait in line for two days for free dental care and then my tooth snapped my tooth snapped in half so I have no other choice but to go spend the $1,100 to fix my tooth but I won't spend the $1,100 to fix my tooth because apparently I can speak without it being shown thank you been a couple of weeks. Actually, to be honest with you, it's been a month, so I have to learn how to deal with it and get it fixed. Other than that, it is what it is. And, um, you know, the things we do amaze us. Because just recently, uh, the phone company that I deal with allegedly, one of their lenders was hacked. Right? My phone has been giving me a message lately. You know, actually last month, and you know, it's weird after it got paid off, it, it took a crap on me. Um, it was saying that whenever I took a picture, it was like a security violation. Your camera will be disabled due to security violation. Because I have a friend of mine. He's a high-powered cannabis grower. Me and this guy, we share growing tips and hints and everything. And, you know, we teach each other 
how to help each other to grow. So he'll send me pictures, I'll send him pictures. We'll compare notes, and you know, I gotta do some more trimming work. We compare notes, and uh, you know, it is what it is. See, I don't like to trim a lot off. I like to keep that on there, I call it hair, a little fuzz, you know. So, when you do get ready to smoke it, Trim it off here. And you trim it down. And you trim it, and you trim it, and you trim it, and you trim it. Then it looks more like this. Well, you get the picture of it. Yeah, I think I'll do some more trimming on this thing. Here, here's a good example. a good example. You take the bud, you just break the stuff off. A lot of people, when they grow this, they, they trim it for sale. And when you have a whole bunch of weed look like you're trying to sell that shit, then that's probably what you're trying to do. But I'm not trying to sell no weed to nobody. I grow this shit for myself. I don't want to share it with nobody because don't nobody come share shit with me. The only people that really share with me is those who grow with me. So I really don't have no time to fuck with nobody else and they bullshit. I need a 10. I need a five, what you got for the hundos, I ain't got no time for that bullshit. You know, me and my little six pound, we smoke this out, okay? You know what I'm saying? That's how the shit's supposed to be. You grow your own, you roll your own, you smoke your own, you clone your own. You pick it off and, you know, clean it up. I still didn't clean that up, dude. Shit is super stinky, I don't like having it in the house. Ah, oh, you get the picture. It's the green and white. So, my catalog was saying that you know I violated the, you know codes and all that, and and it started going off. And then now, you know, the guy reset the camera and everything, and sexy sci-fi told me not to trust T-Mobile. And look, it's weird. This is new. This is new. And they wonder why I didn't pay my bill today. For real? Oh. So the phone started doing this weird thing. Say I want to text somebody. You awake? Yeah, man. Shit, profound racist black man taught me how to think. Hmm. I'm the profound black racist man that taught this guy how to think. So, um, I'm going to text him right now. I don't text, so I talk. Fuck you doing, bitch? Let's see. Just send him the text. So, you see how the phone goes. This thing right here will pop up on the screen and stay there. That bar pops up on the screen and stays there. It stays there all day. Stop now. If he texts me back, that thing will stick on the screen. Won't be able to answer the phone or anything. Thank you, T-Mobile. As soon as I paid with the phone, it took a crap. So the people at the company were like, well, why don't you reset it? I did reset it. I reset it, and it stopped saying that the camera was uh, locked up for security, and that bar starts popping up and locking up on the screen. Popping and locking. So um, I'm ticked. I'm complaining about it. I do my, my thing. You know, I'm telling them about themselves and everything. And these people got the last to tell me, well, did you reset it? I'm like, yeah. Then the guy said, well, maybe we need to troubleshoot it. Well, when you factory reset the damn thing, don't you be, isn't that troubleshooting when you factory reset? Right? Let's get back to the series. 
So when the Syrians get here, they're going to be pissed off. They come from a war-torn country. They've been getting the shit handed to them for like 10 years. And when they hit the streets, they're going to be tribed up. So what's going to happen when you get a bunch of Muslim zealots walking down the street and you see two men holding hands? What used to happen back in the days when you see two black people walking down the street by themselves at night? And a group of white guys would come up to them and just decide to fuck with them because they could and there would be no law against fucking with somebody for no reason. Fuck. Well, yeah, there'd be a law a black person could defend himself. So, what I'm trying to say is this. These people flip out over religious shit. America is a walking contradiction to 95% of the religions that are, you know, present here. You know what I mean? In other words, you know, two gay women walking down the street and a group of Syrian men just might start insulting them and talking shit to them. Now, in America, there used to be groups of people who walked around and insulted and talked shit to people, but that is not the case anymore here. Pretty much in America, the average American wants to be left alone, not bothered, not talked to, not fucked with. We used to be a friendly nation where everybody was, hey, how you doing? I'm doing fine. How's your family? Now nobody gives a shit. I only worry about my own shit. You worry about your own shit. But when a group of people who've been militarized and military terrorized, beaten and gassed and bombed, are going to get a whole new enlightened experience, these people are going to fuck some shit up. And as soon as one of them feel threatened by one of us, black, white, or whatever, we don't know the, the mob mentality they're up to. We don't know what they do. Because we don't do that. We flip out over our new haircut. Am I going to get my teeth fixed? What I look like? Why did you do this? Or why did we flip out over that? They flip out over religious shit. If a woman's face is showing, if her booty or her breast is out, they flip out over that shit. They get territorial. So you'll have a whole bunch of Syrians come in to one area and become territorial. So you can't come in that area once it becomes their area. This is America. We don't do that here no more. You might get a nigga, get off my blocker. White boy, where you supposed to be going? But what is these Mexicans doing over here on these street? They wear blue. We don't wear blue over here. We might get some shit like that. But for the most part, our, our grievances and our biases towards each other is a taught situation. We've been taught how to be mean to each other. They have been warlike for over 15 years now. They've been dodging shit. When they get here, they're going to stretch out. And the problem is, they're going to be placed in areas where new, new, new development will already be pre-established. We're going to build up this community over here. Let's put them in that community. That's what's going to happen across America and poor Americans are going to see this and go off. Go off, not like, you know, attacking these people. They're going to go off and protest and point fingers. And the government's like, we're helping these people. But you have to help the people at home first. Now, if you're the president of the United States of America, your first pledge of allegiance should not be to Israel. Your first pledge of allegiance should be to the people who just voted you in office, the American people. And now we got the American population popularity contest presidential decision making thing. It's all trumped up. The best person to run this country is probably a poor person. A poor person will not get the shot. I can shine some light on that. 
<laughs> but it's sad to know what's going to happen when a new group of people come in here. Think of the history of when groups of people come here. Just recently I saw in the news where some school was trying to teach that slaves migrated here. How do you migrate as a slave? America's history is a lie. And now that we are part of America's future, we can see that new lies are being lined up for those in the next hundred generations. I mean the next hundred years. Where the Africans came here to make a better place. Where the Syrians came here and made America a stronger America. When the Chinese came and claimed their land that they bought and they brought new prosperity to America. All these things and questions about tomorrow, we don't know. But we do know about now. I know if you grab a whole bunch of people that have been bombed and scared to death for the last 10 years and stuck them in the neighborhood, they tell them that you can't trust the average American walking around the street, don't trust the poor white people, don't trust those dirty blacks, and definitely do not trust the scandalous Mexicans. When you tell a group of people this before they even set foot on the land, what do you think they're going to believe they are? They're going to believe they're better than the people that they're coming to be with. They're better than the people that they're around. The difference between them and us is they come from a war-torn country. We're war-torn people. We're torn. No. We're a manipulated species of people who are dumb, stupefied to the world's the world knows we don't know what goes on outside our walls. We got people talking about pull up a, put up a wall between this country, but let the other country, because the people of the other country primarily look like them. They don't need a wall. Every movie we used to watch in the early 80s, all the terrorists were German. Yeah, and Russian. Those people are white, and they look like white people. You don't hear anybody talking about putting up a wall on the Canadian side. You mean the Canadian side, eh? We don't want a wall blocking the Canadians from getting in here because when those white terrorists get here, they'll have an excuse to hang up, lock up, detain poor white people. They're not going to go catch that guy in a BMW driving 99 miles an hour trying to hit 120, trying to get away from the cop. They're going to try to get that guy in a Toyota doing 72 miles an hour trying to get away from the same car. You see, the perception. In America, yes, we are held captive to the Kardashians. We are slaves to what they tell us to watch, how to act, what to drink, when to smile, and how to smile, and how to drink, and how to act when you're drinking and smile. We got rogue members of society flipping out and wanting to kill other people because they don't want to die by themselves. Guess it's back on. Okay, it stopped and froze for a while. Hopefully, the whole video will continue. So, um, it it's just pitiful that we got priorities and they're not correct. Our priorities aren't straight in one way or the other. We have flood and damn near famine in California. No, I said that. We have flood and damn near famine in America is flooding big time and they can't be smart enough to suck the water up 
on a container truck, suck all that contaminated water up and bring it to California, pour it on the ground. When it snows and the people can't get out the houses in New York, and you just let the snow melt and run off into the water, you got these big old trucks that come pick up the snow and melt it. There's people dying to have a glass of water that's fresh. And here in California, and in some places that are drought stricken, they want us to eat eat our own shit pretty much. I'm gonna say it. They want to take our shit, human feces, and burn it. And the steam from the shit, they want to dry it up. I mean, they want to collect the steam and then filter it. And then give it to us for drinking water. How come you can't go to where there's a flood every three months somewhere else, suck the water up, put it on trains, and ship it to California? I hear it's dry. They're in a drought in New Jersey. I don't know. That's what I heard. So if they're in a drought in New Jersey, you can't suck the water up from the flood in Texas and put it on a train or on the freeway and trucks. You get the same trucks that you got the, the, the oil and the gas on our freeways. You can put water in those. The same ones you got milk going from the dairy farms. You can put water in those and transfer them to New Jersey, New Mexico, wherever there is a drought. There's big time flooding over here in Nebraska. Then the closest place to drought, ship the water there. You guys got the Congress and all this, the Congress and the Senate all tied up in the XL pipeline. What about the, uh, the Agua pipeline? You know, why don't you pipe that water from North Carolina and Kentucky and in the flood zones, pump the water out of the flood zones onto trucks and onto trains and take it to where there is no water. But know what, we're gonna fight over oil pipeline. You know, why don't these states why don't you get greedy? Why don't you suck the water up, sell it to California? Because soon, you, when you go into drought stage, they're going to tell you that you should drink your own shit. Oh, better yet, you're not going to be drinking your own shit, but the shit from everybody in your neighborhood, the shit from everybody in the community, the shit from everybody in your town, the shit from everybody within the next 200 miles around you. This is what they want to put in our bodies. So maybe once there's a mistake, oh my God, we have gave three million people E. coli all in one day because the water supply, but one guy didn't change the filter. He's supposed to turn the machine off and change the filter. He left the machine on and took the filter out and stuck another one in there. That kills three million. We don't know, but I know that in a common sense world, when you have problems, major problems like the United States of America does, you don't bring in war-torn people into a situation that's volatile already, and they're already going to feel as if they're the privileged because some of them look like those who they may believe are privileged. It's going to be bad. I hear these people are already being rude to Germans in Germany. They're being rude and territorial in every place they've stopped. We got some own problems. Some own problems. Some own problems. And we always want to help people, but we can't help ourselves. I gotta get that fixed. I can't be like that. I can't look like what people assume or think I am. So, am I mad at these Syrians for wanting to get out? No, I'm not mad at them. I'm not mad at them at all. I'm mad at our government for allowing a, a, a group of people who, who are gonna be machete wielding beat your ass, rob, rape, murder your ass, 
worse than any so-called Mexican, it's going to be bad. It's going to be real bad. So, I don't care. As long as my family's safe, my people are right. So, T-Mobile fucked me. They let themselves get hacked. My phone's on the shits. Look at the sky today. Today is uh, October 8th, 2015. It is 10 a.m. California. Um, there's the moon is still out. So it's just a sliver of a moon, a crescent moon. The crescent moon has a little star. It looks to be a star to the left of the moon. It shines bright as the moon, and in some cases brighter than the moon. But move my lips sideways, look like Michael Strahan. <laughs> but We just got too much on our plate. You got people screaming Black Lives Matter. That's the worst thing you could do in a situation where if you know anything about life, the people who have been fucking completely ignored the worst of the poor white person. They have been ignored because they believe they have white privilege, but they don't. They don't have no privilege. They got a lot of cardboard. A lot of the Sharpies. They make signs. They're the best sign makers ever. I've seen seen some wonderful signs from the poor white people. Um, a lot of poor white people are jealous of me. I don't leave the house anymore. I dress like I'm homeless. <laughs> Look homeless now. And I go places. I pull out credit cards. I pull out cash. Ola. What, you sell drugs? You a drug dealer? You see drug dealer bling on me? Shit, my arm is dirty. Look, you see the dirt on my arm? I got my pajamas on and I got dirt on my shit. The dirt, that's dirt. That's from trimming. Shit stuck on my skin. It's, it's bad. It's weed oil all in my skin and shit. Remember, my face burned off. My chest was burned off, but uh, I got no muscles no more. Still got the shoulders. <laughs> Gotta get that tooth fixed. So you won't see no more videos from me because this shit is done. All of them. So um, when I was younger, I had full dental. And uh, when I got married, I had excellent dental insurance. But whenever I went to the dentist, they'd be like, oh, just be easier just pull those out. Now, I've learned um, the Germans did that. They systematically took out the Jews' teeth, you know, to see how they would react, see how long it would take for the body or the rest of the teeth to break down because you have to... You need to look it up. It's fucked up shit that Germans did. Well, it's fucked up shit what the Nazis did to the Jews. Not necessarily German people, the Nazis. America embraced the Nazis, and you know, that's this is Nazi America, and I'm quick to tell people that, and a lot of people don't like me for saying it, but this is Nazi America. So, um, what's next? What I want to do next week is set up some appointments, get some prices. Um, somebody told me, go get a GoFundMe page. See how that works. If I go get a GoFundMe page, I bet you be all kind of racist shit. Ready. Oh, niggers don't deserve teeth. You guys don't deserve to eat food. Because if you eat, you're taking food out of somebody's wife's mind. I'm tired of hearing that shit. But it's the internet. I know thousands of white people that don't carry themselves like that. And people say, well, why do I bring out white people whenever I bring up race? Why don't I talk about the racist black people? Well, like I said, the text the guy gave me says I'm the most racist black person he's ever known in his whole time, entire life, and and I taught him how to think differently. This is a white man. The Confederate flag shit. He comes over my house, fucking last Thanksgiving, wearing a Confederate flag hat. Not cool. I think I did. I told you that on the video. Not cool. So um, we talked about the Syrians come here fucking up shit. We talked about how. T-Mobile was hacked and my phone is saying I'm violating security. We talked about how the phone 
always turns that microphone on and talk and text microphone. We talked about um, racism again for the millionth time. We talked about um, oh today I'm new chapter for us here. About six seven years ago, I had Comcast internet blazing fast speed. Forty-four dollars and thirty-eight no thirty-eight dollars a month or something. That was expensive just for the damn internet. Oh. So after the promotion was over, the price went to seventy-nine dollars. I canceled that ass. I'm like, hey, could you switch me over to something such oh no. Your package is over. You you don't get to switch. So I canceled them. I was pissed off and I was like, fuck ye. So then we switched to Direct TV and AT&T for the internet. Now the trees have overgrown AT um, the Direct TV, so the Direct TV is <laughs> digital flaky and all that stuff. So you know that's gone. So we're switching back to Comcast. The guy's supposed to be here from 10 a.m., which is 10 on the nose right now, and noon. Well, when we had the internet connected back up through Comcast last week, the guy cut the wire going underneath the house. So that means this guy has to rewire the whole house. Because that wire that was underneath the house, I just pulled that motherfucker out. So I need to get the whole house rewired. That's fine because after I get the whole house rewired, I'm going to call the satellite guy and have my personal satellite dish hooked up. Once my dish is hooked up and set up, I'll be able to get all the satellite channels for free. All the free satellite channels they have. All the free satellites that you can get to. Because I got the United States automatic satellite detection system on my satellite. So once I get all that hooked up, I'll have that hooked up into the man cave. It's located outside. Once the man cave is totally tuned on and TV there, we're getting the sports package added in today because I haven't got to see a basketball game this season. And the second one is coming up tonight. So, we got a new projector, all that stuff. Man cave, good. This morning, I had to prepare every spot where the TV is going to be. That sucks. I just want you to know. So once we get the new thing set up, I get the new shit set up. Getting back to Microsoft. The main server out there where I do all my stuff and uh, music and everything. The Windows 10 somehow erased every bit of my personal media. All of our videos, all of our songs, all the movie ideas that we started, and every fucking video that I was working on that I didn't finish. All gone. <laughs> like a tree hand. Tree hand. Tree hand. So. I'm just pissed off at Microsoft now, and I called him yesterday and went off. The lady hung up on me. When you were using the, um, she said, my, the 10, uh, some preview for 10. Now, the preview for 10, I told the people, hey, um, I'll put the preview on my server, blah, 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 yaddy, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you're part of the program, yada, 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 yada. Once it's done, you're going to get an upgrade. Upgrade's going to be the shit. Blah, 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 blah. You can still do the previews for us. Check out new previews. I'm like, okay, fine. You're getting it for free, no problem. There's no way to reset my server. The new music that has been done on the server is on the C drive. The C drive is locked. So I'm switching back to Ubuntu. I'm going back to the free shit. Um, the people at uh, T-Mobile want me to switch to an Apple. We can get you a new iPhone for $9,000 and 87 cents. What the fuck I need an iPhone for? I go buy a new car. A new used car for the price of an iPhone. Why would I buy an iPhone? So the moral of the story is that what are we going to do? we got a group of people coming to our country who are, um, their priorities will be their group of people. Their belief system is religious based. We have a system which constantly wants us and forces us to upgrade. 
the whole purpose of all my media disappearing is because they want me to buy it from them. Now, on this phone, I had the Amazon, you know, Prime video because I have an Amazon Prime account. Like, all of a sudden on this phone, my Amazon Prime was wouldn't work it. If I call it, complain. Well, you can just get movies from Google Play. Why would I get some shit from a service where I get I pay for a service and get the movies? I pay to ship and get ship shit shipped to me, you know, the hundred dollars so I get free shipping from Amazon. And they throw in Amazon Prime. You damn right I'm gonna watch that, but I can't watch it on here. I decided to put fifteen hundred songs on the memory chip. Right? And then they got a song player. The song player stopped playing my songs. MP3, the MP3 player is no longer playing. You can still hear it on Google Play. So my son told me, Microsoft can is going around and destroying people's media. I didn't believe it. My 2,000 movies, gone. All of my MP3s, gone. Here's the kicker. That hard drive was not the C drive. It was studio. Studio drive completely wiped. You see, I can look at that drive by pulling out, putting it into my um, array. I have an array, a hard drive array. It's got seven terabytes in that. So I put it in there and all my files are gone. Now, I can understand you self imploding your programming, but what is the purpose of deleting all of my movies? and all of my mp3 even the windows uh, music system whatever they have now I put my songs on this computer oh, we can't access those but you can access the same songs on your server for a price America is not the place for somebody who just wants I just want to be here why you lose every time you come here we're slaves to the system. Now, that's in 40 minutes. You gotta get the guy in there and get the table. Good night, thank you.